Thank you, Jan. Yeah, well, I'm an audio designer, and I create interactive experiences that challenge our conceptions of cultural and natural environments. I mainly use open data to generate soundscapes and uh, that enable us to explore data by listening. I became interested within this field during my study, where I was introduced to new ways of combining art, technology, and science in order to augment intangible aspects of the world. So why should we consider using sound to deal with data? Well, first of all, we're equipped with a powerful listening system. Uh, we're able to decode multi-dimensional information on an extremely complex level. For instance, when we listen to a spoken sentence, we're able to understand both uh, the emotional state and the gender of the speaker, as well as the semantics and so on. When we listen to music, we choose to listen to it as a whole or selectively move our focus towards certain instruments. Uh, we constantly switch between different kinds of listening modes, and we even listen when we sleep. By training our listening skills, we're able to absorb a huge amount of information contained within single sonic events. And I see a huge potential of integrating uh, son data sonifications across a lot of different domains. Listening is just one of the modalities uh, through which we perceive the world, but I think that uh, sound especially has a strong potential of conveying information. Cities have today become sentient. They act as uh, these giant collectors and emitters of data, which often remains hidden and unnoticed by citizens. And I think that one of the ways to overcome the challenges of big data is by making data open in a much higher degree, and by actively engaging citizens to use the, the data purposefully. And I've actually brought an example of uh, citizen engagement to show you later. So how is it possible to translate data into sound? Well, for this uh, particular event, I've created a couple of simple uh, examples to show you some uh, relations, one-to-one -one relations between data and sound. So the first example is a sonification of real-time weather data provided by uh, the website openweathermap.org. I've translated the wind speed in three different cities into the sound of wind chimes. And I've used the wind chimes as a sort of metaphor that signify wind, and most people can relate to this particular sound as somewhat pleasant, and thereby being able to sense the wind emotionally. So let's listen to Frankfurt. So this is the current wind speed in Frankfurt. And here we have the wind speed in Wellington, New Zealand, which is actually a very windy city. And here we have the wind speed in Chicago, also known as the Windy City. <laughs> it's not that windy right now. I've also brought uh, a couple of uh, sensors to show you how to use different kinds of physical input to manipulate sound in real time. So this particular uh, sensor board is an Arduino board. It's very small, I know, uh, equipped with uh, two sensors from uh, Seedduino, uh, Seed Studio. So.
The first uh, sensor is a combined temperature and humidity sensor, uh, and this sensor uh, controls the pitch and the tempo of the composition. So I've, I have some coffee here, hot coffee. So if I expose this sensor to steam, you can see that the input will rise. So the, um, the randomly generated chords uh, are moving towards a higher register according to rising temperature. And the heartbeat should, whoa, that's it, okay. So the heartbeat are moving towards a higher tempo, tempo as you can hear. <laughs> and uh, this is according to a rising humidity. So the humidity is very high right now, so there's really a high tempo of uh, the heartbeat. So when I re remove it, the, the input will slowly move back to normal state. And so will the composition. The next sensor is uh, a gas sensor, which measures uh, a combination of gases in the air in raw voltage. So if I expose this sensor to uh, lighter gas, for example, you will see that the input will rise and this will generate noise and glitchy effects. that the tempo is moving down slowly. Okay. I've also uh, brought another project called Sonic Particles, which was a part of uh, the International Data Art Challenge, uh, Data Canvas, uh, Sense Your City. Uh, Data Canvas consists of an extensive network of DIY sensors, uh, which measures different kinds of uh, environmental data, such as pollution, dust, light, noise, and so on. And these sensors are spread out in seven cities across the world, um, and each sensor has a Wi-Fi connection, uh, and they are uh, citizen-hosted. So citizens have placed them at home, at workplaces, at public spaces uh, and stuff like that. And uh, all of the data are available online. So I've used these data to create a continuously evolving uh, soundscape that will reflect the current environmental conditions in each city. So I've created a couple of uh, extreme examples of uh, low and high data values. So let's listen to what uh, low pollution sounds like. And now let's uh, listen to what a high pollution sounds like uh, and note how the harmonics of uh, the sound have changed. I've also uh, brought the real-time version of the project. So uh, let's listen to uh, what a couple of the cities sound like right now. San Francisco, temperature medium.
weight level pi. Concentration of harmful gases, medium. Humidity, low. Dust level, low. Noise level, medium. Rio de Janeiro. Temperature, high. Light level, high. Concentration of harmful gases, high. Humidity, medium. Dust level, low. Noise level, high. Shanghai. Temperature, high. Light level, low. Concentration of harmful gases, medium. Humidity, medium. Dust level, medium. Noise level, high. Okay. It's possible to translate almost any kind of data into sound. And I see a huge potential of integrating uh, these kinds of data sonifications across a lot of different domains in order to explore how we're able to experience, sense, and make sense of intangible aspects of the world. I will, of course, uh, continue my uh, research within this uh, field. And at the moment, I'm actually starting up a project about broadening the sonifications uh, towards a wider use. And uh, I actually believe that this could make a difference in various industries, in smart cities, and the future of smart homes. So if this has uh, caught your interest, please tap me on the shoulder. And thank you for listening. <laughs>